solubility. We're going to look at saturation and how to use solubility curves. So we're going to be talking about water as the solvent. Um, it can hold on to a certain amount of solute and that amount will depend on which solute you're dealing with and the temperature of the water. Um, we're going to look at solid solutes as well as gas solutes. Um, gases will also be affected by pressure. So when a solute is holding on to the most amount of a particular solvent for a particular temperature, we would refer to that water as being saturated with the solute. Um, so we'd have a saturated solution. So you can imagine um, in one situation, so this would be for a particular solute, so let's say this is sodium chloride, um, the water would be able to hang on to a certain amount of sodium chloride. If it is holding on to the very highest amount, the most amount that it can, those ions would be dissolved in the water, you're going to have a saturated solution. If you had fewer ions than that, it would be unsaturated, not yet full, and so you could put more in to get to a saturated solution. And there are some cases where you can actually have more than the water can hold on to. That seems like it doesn't seem possible. Um, if that is the case, it is a super saturated solution. So the water is essentially holding on to too many ions uh, or if molecules or whatever it happens to be, um, too many of them for that given situation. It's going to want to let some of them out of solution. And so they, they would, if they're, they're ions, they would crystallize as ionic crystal. If they're molecules, they might, might uh, precipitate out as a crystal of that particular molecule. If they're gases, they might bubble out of the solution. Um, but for a moment in time, maybe a long moment in time they could there could be more of that solute in the water than the water wants to hold that would be a super saturated solution and it's going to try to get back to a saturated solution by letting go of some of that solute so we can plot this on a graph and each solute would have to have its own line we tend to put temperature on the x-axis and we put the amount of solute in grams per 100 milliliters of water. Remember the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So therefore, if you had 100 grams, it'd be the same thing as saying 100 milliliters of water. And so for a particular solute, you're gonna end up with a line, and that is for all of these given temperatures, so wherever you happen to read your x-axis, um, that is the level of solute in grams that 100 milliliters of water could hold. For Whatever solute it happens to be, the amount that can fit into the water will probably change as the temperature changes. If you have a point where you have the amount of solute is right on the line for the given temperature, so imagine, get rid of this stuff down here. Imagine, let's say this was the temperature right here. You could go up to the line, you'd say, okay, at that temperature, we can have, let's do this in a different color here. If we went up, red to that point and we hit the line we could go across and we could find out okay well and this would be in grams so we have like i don't know one two three and so on um, and so that temperature at that exact place where it meets the line you could go across and you could look at how many grams of the solute could be held at that given temperature if you had another temperature further along you could go up to the line and then follow it across to your y-axis and say, I don't know, maybe that's five grams or something like that. Um, and then you could actually say, okay, at that new temperature over here, the amount of solute that the water can hold is whatever corresponding amount it happens to be. If at that same temperature it happens to be higher, so let's say it was holding six, um, then that would mean it is super saturated. If at that same temperature here, maybe it had this much amount here, maybe only four grams, then it would be an unsaturated solution. So these solubility curves draw a line of saturation. Any amount above that line would be super saturated and any amount below that line would be unsaturated. For solids, the solubility curves will vary with temperature and with different solids that you're, you're dealing with. So you can see something like potassium bromide is more soluble than sodium chloride um, at any particular given temperature. The amount of solubility, the amount of grams that fit into 100 milliliters of that substance is higher um, for potassium bromide than sodium chloride. So you could say potassium bromide is more soluble than sodium chloride. And these lines here show their solubility curve. So you could say, okay, at, I know, let's pick one that's really fairly easy to read here. So let's say this is about 50 degrees Celsius. And so that means 
for potassium bromide, if we look at about 50 degrees Celsius, it hits here. We can say, okay, that corresponds to 80 grams per 100 milliliters of water. So the solubility of potassium bromide at 50 degrees Celsius is 80 grams per 100 milliliters. If you had less than that, so let's say you only had 60 grams and the water temperature was 50 degrees Celsius, that is below the line, so that is an unsaturated solution. If you somehow managed to get in 100 grams, well, the water was at a temperature of 50, that would be above the line for potassium bromide, so it would be super saturated. So we can see what these saturation curves look like for different substances. And again, they, they vary depending on what substance you're dealing with. And as you can see, for solids, um, they tend to increase with temperature. Not all of them, um, but they tend to increase. As the temperature gets higher, the curves tend to move up as well. So the solubility of most solids tend to increase with temperature, though that is not the case with all solids. For gases, um, it is that they also vary, um, but they will tend to decrease with temperature. So as the temperature of the water goes up, the solubility of the gases tends to go down. So if you see something like oxygen, um, if the water temperature is, let's say, 5 degrees-ish, um, there can be more oxygen dissolved than if it were at 30 degrees the solubility of gases tends to decrease with an increase in temperature of the water. Also notice that these are not grams per 100 milliliters or grams of water, um, but the solubility, the solutes amount are in milligrams. Gases are much less soluble per mass than solids are. You can fit less of them, water can hold on to less of them, and so these are measured in smaller units here. Pressure is also going to have an effect on a gas's solubility, and you've seen this anytime you open a carbonated beverage. When the bottle is pressurized, the gases stay in solution. So pressure increases solubility. When you let the pressure off, the gases will leave solution, and you can see that as the bubbles come out of the solution. Um, so low pressure decreases solubility of gases, high pressure increases the solubility. So reading these solubility curves, we've done a couple of examples. Let's, let's try these ones here. So first one, how many grams of sodium chloride uh, will fully dissolve in 100 mils of water? And again, check the y-axis. We are talking about 100 milliliters of water here. Density of water is one gram per milliliter. Um, and so if we have 100 milliliters of water and the temperature is 90 Celsius, how many grams of sodium chloride would fit in? So we've got to find the curve for sodium chloride. We've got to find the temperature at 90. And then we just take it up to the curve here. And at that point, right on the line, um, some of them are more line, straight line than curved line, uh, but right on the, the curve there, the line, that is the amount. So if we go across to the side here, that is the amount that will be soluble, will, will, will saturate the solution at that point. So at 90 degrees, 100 milliliters of water would be able to hold about 40 grams for sodium chloride. If it was something like um, ammonia chloride, it would be a higher amount. If it was something like potassium chlorate, it would be a lower amount. All right, second one. What temperature would 140 grams of potassium nitrate saturate 100 milliliters of water? So we're looking at 140 grams of potassium nitrate. So again, we want to look at potassium nitrates curve, it's this blue one here. And so if we're looking at 140 grams, um, we can take that across and see where the saturation point is. And it's not till you get to this point where you actually hit potassium nitrates curve. And so we can go down and read what temperature that would be at. And so at 70 degrees Celsius, um, that is the, the temperature at which you'd be able to put 140 grams of potassium nitrate into 100 milliliters of water. Anything more than that, you'd have a super saturated solution. Anything below that, you'd have an unsaturated solution. So this would give you exactly a saturated solution. Last one, if a saturated solution of sodium nitrate at 45 degrees, let's do this one in a different color here. Um, and so we need to find sodium nitrate and it is at 45 degrees and it's a saturated solution. So if we find our 45 degrees, it's right in the middle here. And so if we go up to about there, that would be the, the temperature at 45 degrees. And we can see at that amount, it can hold 110 grams. 
But the question is asking, well, what happens if, so there's our 45 degrees Celsius. Um, if, what happens if you took that solution that was saturated and you cooled it down to 10 degrees? So you brought this line over here and you, you brought it over to 10 degrees here. So if we look at 10 degrees and we look at sodium nitrate, it can only hold 80. So if you took this beaker that was holding on to 110 grams when it was at 45 degrees and you cooled it down to 10 degrees now, the ability of water to hold on to that sodium nitrate would decrease. And so it would have to go from 110 down to 80. It wants to let go of 30 grams of this solute that's in there because otherwise it'd be super saturated. If it was still up here, it would be a super saturated solution. So what it will do is it will let go of that um, solute that's in it, let go of that sodium nitrate. And so these will come out of solution as a precipitate. And the difference to take it back down to its saturation point, the point where water can hold on to that particular amount, happens to be 80 grams of sodium nitrate. And so the difference between 110 and 180 and 80 would be 30 grams of the sodium nitrate would have to come out of solution and you'd form this precipitate and you'd be back to a saturated solution.